Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Bedtime Stories. I'm Jamila Gafour. I will be reading your bedtime story today. So children, are we ready? Have we brushed our teeth? Yes. Have we got our PJs on? And are we cosy? Was that a yes? Then let's get started. Now today I have chosen this is one of my children's favourite books and I love reading this story too. It's called Zoe and the Fairy Medicine. Zoe and the Fairy Medicine. What do we think the story is about? What could it be about? So, could it be about a fairy and something to do with medicine maybe? Oh, so let's find out. Yeah, Zoe and the Fairy Medicine. <clears throat> and this is by Jane Andrews. She does lots of lovely stories. I'll be away for a few days at the annual fairy convention, announced the fairy queen one morning. There must be no trouble here at the fairy school. The fairies assured her that they would be on their best behaviour and watched her as she flew off and clutching her full suitcase. A few days later, Zoe and Pip were playing with their friends, Marcy in the woods. They were jumping from the toadstool to another. It was great fun. Suddenly, Marcy jumped too high and bumped her head. On an overhanging branch, splat, she fell to the ground. Oh, poor Marcy, said Pip. We must take her to see the fairy nurse immediately, said Zoe. Poor Marcy, she jumped too high, didn't she? At the castle, at the castle sick room, Marcy was put to bed with a bandage on her head. The fairy nurse gave her some medicine to make her feel better. But just as she got up, but just as she was about to put the medicine back, she noticed something on the bottle. Oh no, I've given her the growing medicine, she cried. Just then, Marcy's leg and arms started getting longer. Help, whispered Marcy. Oh dear, said the fairy nurse, looking at the cabinet. I'm afraid that we have run out of shrinking medicine and only the fairy queen knows how to make it. Zoe and Pip knew in the library there was a book, a potion and medicines and their ingredients. So they rushed there immediately. They had to stop Marcy from growing. After searching all day, they found a recipe, a shrinking potion. Eureka, cried Zoe but we will have to fly to the top of the fairy mountain for some of these ingredients and the mountain is guarded by a scary troll. They went back to say goodbye to Marcy who had grown a lot more during the day. Don't worry Marcy, we'll shrink you again. We will be, we will get off to get the ingredients first thing tomorrow, said Zoe. Marcy just won't stop growing. Look at her legs. <clears throat> Early the next morning, armed with sleeping dust to protect themselves against the scary troll, Zoe and Pip set off. They flew higher and higher into the mountains, up through the clouds and over the craggy rocks. 
they were frightened and worried and tired, but they knew they had to keep going. When at last they reached the top, they paused to catch their breath. There's the two fairies climbing higher and higher above the mountain. Thud, thud, thud. As they were resting, they heard a sound like thunder. We must stay calm, said Pip, but the noise kept getting closer and louder. Thud, thud, thud. It isn't thunder at all, whispered Zoe, as she and Pip clung to each other. It's... What do you think it is? What is that thudding sound? It's... It's a troll. A big, scary troll. He does look quite scary, doesn't he? And just as the fairies were about to throw the sleeping dust at him, the troll gave them a big friendly smile. Can I help you fairies? He asked most politely. Zoe and Pip were speechless. The troll didn't seem scary at all. Have you had a long flight? He asked, why have you come here? Zoe was the first to find her voice. Please, Mr. Troll, our friend Marcy keeps growing and we need to make something to stop her and to make something, a shrinking potion. Because the fairy nurse got mixed up with her and gave a growing potion instead and soon she'll be too big for the castle. As Zoe continued to tell her story, Pip handed the list to the troll. Sounds like he's a, he's a nice troll. Don't worry, said the troll gently. I can help, but I'll need your assistance in getting the ingredients. With that, the fairies were off with the troll and began their search. First, they collected gooey slime from the troll's cave. Then they plucked a feather from a sleeping vulture. They picked the deepest purple forest violets and took some sticky, soft web from an angry spider. Back in the cave, the troll added spices and seasoning, and at last he pronounced it ready. So they've got all their ingredients now for the potion. It had been a long day. Zoe and Pip were exhausted, so the troll kindly carried them up the mountainside. The fairies at the fairy castle were so frightened when they saw the troll that they barred the windows and doors. Don't worry, Zoe and Pip called to them from the ground. We have the shrinking medicine and the troll, he helped us. When Zoe and Pip were let in the castle, they took the potion straight to the sick room. Here, take the potion quickly, said the fairy nurse to Marcy. The fairy queen is coming back tomorrow morning. Zoe, Pip and the fairy nurse nervously watched and waited. Then suddenly, what do you think happened? They've given her the potion. Let's find out. 
When the Fairy Queen returned, she looked around carefully. Is everything in order? She asked. Everyone nodded. Yes. Isn't Marcy just a bit taller than usual? Asked the Fairy Queen. Um, well, she must have had a growing sprout while you were away, said Zoe. Hmm, thought the Queen. Something doesn't seem right. Hmm, said the Fairy Queen. And when no one was looking, she gave the troll a wink. She knew something wasn't right, didn't she? Oh, and that's the end of the story. I really enjoyed that story. I hope you did too. And maybe next time you could choose a story, one of your favourite stories, and I could read that to you. Reading before bed, even if it's just five, ten minutes, is always good for you. So try and read every day, five or ten minutes just before bed. If you've got younger siblings, younger brothers and sisters, maybe they can join in too and read with you. Sometimes it's nice to do group, group reading or sometimes it's just nice to sit by yourself and read. Or maybe you could read with your parents and read to your older siblings. If they've got time, they can sit with you and read. And after we've read, maybe we can think about what the story's about and what did we actually understand about the story. That helps us to understand what we've read and gives us more knowledge to read more books. As you've been sitting so nicely and quietly, I've decided I'm going to read you one more story. But this time, it's not from a book. It's something that I'm going to read to you. It's one of my favourites that I always read to my children before bed. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe you'll know the story. It's a classic story. So are we ready for the next story? Here we go. The story is called Little Red Riding Hood. Who's heard of this story before? Little Red Riding Hood is a small girl who lives with her mum near a forest. Now, let the story begin. One day, Little Red Riding Hood mum called Little Red Riding Hood. Please come here, dear. Can you take this basket of cookies and cupcakes to your grandma's house? She called me today and said she's not very well. Can you drop this basket off to grandmother's house? Little Red Riding Hood said, yes, mummy, I will take the basket. Her mum said, be careful when you walk through the jungle, the forest. So Little Red Riding Hood got her cape, her Little Red Riding Hood jacket and her basket and set off walking through the forest. Bye, Mummy. See you soon. Be careful, dear. Be careful when you walk through the forest. Little Red Riding Hood set off walking through the forest. She was humming mm -hmm, her favourite song and hopping with her basket in one hand. Then suddenly she heard a noise. Some footsteps behind her. She looked around. Oh, where is this noise coming from? There was nothing there. So Little Red Riding Hood carried on hopping and humming. Mm -hmm, humming her favourite song. Then suddenly she heard a voice. Hello, little girl. She turned around to see who it was. It was a wolf. She said, hello. He said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to see my grandmother because she's not very well. Then the wolf said, something smells delicious. What is that in your basket? Little Red Riding Hood innocently said, these are cookies and cupcakes. My mum baked them for my grandmother as she's not feeling very well. Very good, said the, said the wolf. <clears throat> and Little Red Riding Hood carried on walking. Then he crept behind her, slowly and slowly, 
and went right behind him and said, Rah! Then, Little Red Riding Hood got so scared, she dropped her basket and she ran and ran as fast as she could. She got home and said, Mummy, Mummy, there's a big wolf chasing me. Little Red Riding Hood mum held Little Red Riding Hood so tight and said, I will never let you go through the forest by yourself again. So what did we, what did we learn about this story? Little Red Riding Hood was walking through the forest and what did she do that she shouldn't have done? She was talking to a stranger. That wolf was a stranger. And then she gave information that she shouldn't have given. So what do we know? When we go out, we mustn't talk to strangers or give out any information. So next time, when we go out, we should be really careful and not make the same mistake as Little Red Riding Hood as there are baddies out there like the wolf trying to follow you or speak to you or be friendly with you on the streets when you're outside. So we can learn from Little Red Riding Hood. Don't speak to strangers and don't give information about where you're going. So stay safe, be safe and I hope you enjoy the story of Little Red Riding Hood and hope to see you again soon. Have a good night. Bye.